After leaving us with a very short highlight reel in November, demotion threatened Ozeki Asanoyama was pining for a flying start in January. He didn't get one. The worrisome right shoulder impacted well, but his left was repelled, clearing Daesho's path to the throat before this fine bicep pin broke his will. Clearly stung, the Ozeki took out his frustrations on Hokuto Fuji, forcing the pace with the right from the off and not even needing an outside left. That's the real me, he told reporters, and the fans were keen for this man to stay. But the real Asanoyama disappeared overnight, leaving this trembling imposter to run straight into Mitake Umi's arm block and beat a hasty retreat. He was grateful to Takakesho's three defeats for keeping the spotlight off him. On day four, free to focus on beating Ornoshaw's left to the punch with an inside right, he looked markedly better. His fifth match was then gifted to him by Tochinoshin's misjudged slap. But just as we thought, momentum was gained. Takara Fuji locked the inside right to escape its clutches, then wriggled his own right inside the Ozeki's stooping frame, blocking off the outside left, but ensuring he secured his own. And how? Six days in, and Asanoyama still needed five more wins to keep rank, with only third division sparring partners to hand. In the past, he would have continued to stutter, was what NHK's Mainomi opined. But now he's at a higher rank, his Ozeki pride really kicks in. That was indeed the case from day 7, starting with a strong display against winless Kotoshoho, which showed inside right and outside left in all their glory. That was built upon on day 8. Endo, who memorably trounced him in their last encounter, missing his parry and hemmed in from the right. On day 9, Asanoyama was relentless, winning the tussle for the inside arm, then profiting from a longer reach on the left. And on day 10, a magnificent elbow pin and parry had high-hipped Tamawashi reeling and ripe for falling into the Ozeki's desired shape. The magical eighth win then came in satisfying fashion against another man he'd recently lost to, Takano Shou, who was beaten for speed at the Tachiai, constrained by a left clamp, pushed away and coolly slapped down. Now only one win off the lead, Asanoyama had the perfect chance to show his mettle against the man who gives him most trouble of all, Tedono Fuji. After having his outside left broken in July, his inside left thwarted in September, and his inside right mocked in November, had Asanoyama finally come up with something to arrest the slump. Perhaps a backward moving throw as Chairman Hakaku had suggested. Here, there was some progress. He did secure the inside right and keep his hips away from Teru's deadly outside left to begin with. But still, he gets driven back by the bigger man, and when he does, how does he react? 
by moving the right knee forward. Thank you very much, says Ted no Fuji, who takes the outside left, leaving Asa with only a fine act of resistance to console himself. He doesn't have the raw power or bulk to beat this man head on, and must find a way to annoy him from the right a la Takayasu. Compared to that, Okinomi was mere fodder. Meisei, despite beating him on the inside, left the outside unguarded for the slapdown, and Shodai was simply too kind to squash the referee, as you've likely already seen in the link above. That final day win took Asanayama level with Shodai and Teronofuji in joint second, with his highest score since missing out on a second title last July. I wanted a good performance at the end to take into the next tournament, he said of the Shodai match. And I made sure to advance once I felt him retreat. I owe my good results to putting thoughts of demotion to the back of my mind and just continuing with my style of sumo. But since that final day interview, he's vowed to vary things up and tailor his game plan better to specific foes. And yes, that does include a scheme to block Teronofuji's lethal outside left.